So I'm so excited to be sitting here with you, Sam, to talk about uh, on the 25th anniversary about the original inspiration for the school and how it all got started. Yeah, that was uh, 25 years ago, as you, as you alluded to. Uh, I actually had been thinking about getting out of the motion picture business. My son is high-functioning autistic, and I had been traveling all over the world and doing things, and I had to, I had to stick home closer. So I had this PhD from a while back, and uh, I thought I'd give it a run for its money and looked into several film programs around the country. Out of the blue, while I was on location, I got a call from uh, a fellow in the chancellor's office at NCSA, and they were looking for a a founding dean for a new film school they wanted to start. Tom was his name. He became this, this kind of pen pal phone buddy that was the only person who didn't have a problem. And I talked to him several times over that, that shoot and, um, and then kind of forgot about things, came back home into LA and uh, there was a FedEx package with some tickets for the next week to go to Winston-Salem and visit the school and I did and by the end of a day walking around the School of the Arts and and not only uh, I mean then there was no film school to see but there was uh, a ballet dancer leaping over somebody's head there was a uh, uh, you open a door and there's someone playing Chopin you go into the design and production area and they're painting flats and I just realized it was a very special place. So there was no vi video village you, no. you moved into what I believe was a diaper factory. Yeah it was, a, it was a, on the corner of Watt Town there right across from design and production. So did you immediately start the plans on building a studio just like a studio lot which pretty, we have now? Pretty quickly at the we um, well first of all we renovated that diaper factory, we put a screening room in there, we did a few things, and then the transmission garage next door, we created a stage and uh, another screening room and taught out of those spaces. But you know, the, it reminds me so much of, of lots like Raleigh, you know, with the older Raleigh, not the newer right. Raleigh, or, or any of the back lots. And, and the, the facility is still, the studio spaces are still as good, if not better, than some of the biggest programs right. in the country, so That's right. what you did is pretty remarkable. Well, and Well, the, the idea was kind of like if you're going to train doctors, you need a, a hospital. And so you need the real thing. And, and we b believed from the very beginning that we weren't working with students, we were working with filmmakers. And as we still treat them that way. And they all say they feel so comfortable when they get into the business being on the lots. Absolutely. Because they've trained there. Well, you did remarkable work. I mean, we're building on a legacy that you started. You should be very proud of what you've well, done. Well, I, I am very proud of it. I'm, I'm, and I'm really proud of the students, uh, the filmmakers who've come out of there and contributed to the profession. They're remarkable. I think they're the reason for the success of the school, ultimately. And you, start, you look and see if they were given that sense that they could go out and tell stories too, but they're telling it with their own voices. They're not telling it, mimicking what's being done in the industry. So there is kind of a uniqueness to the kind of students that we graduate. And I think that's what makes this place really special. You know, it makes it different from the big universities that are well established yes. for 50 years. And that was there at the beginning, this idea of, uh, well, first of all, dedication to storytelling, but to stories that were rooted in your own experience, not necessarily rooted in popular culture. Uh, if you, you know, over the years, I've been able to look at all the different film schools, and I used to judge the academies, uh, short films and and, and student films uh, for Academy Awards. You can tell the various schools, yeah, you can. Uh, and many of them do really rely on popular culture, whatever the film of the moment is, yeah. the style of the moment, uh, whether it's in editing or cinematography, trying to look like what they think will uh, be their calling card into the industry. And I'm telling you, the best calling card is a good story well told. So now that we're at 25 years, do you have, a, do you have any ideas or vision or hope for what the next 25 years could well, be? That's a good question. I think, I think the future really is it going to be about more and more uh, grounding filmmakers in a broad foundation of liberal arts and understanding, knowing that their, their films have to be about something. Not only their voice, but it's gonna to have to be about history, politics, uh, environment, things you know, and issues that are out there in front of us that are big, big questions. I mean, we're talking about survival of planets and stuff. And, 
in the next hundred years. Uh, the filmmakers of the future are going to have to tell those stories to write those problems and address those challenges. I think the understanding that the technology is just a tool uh, and not the, the end is uh, something that we have to remind filmmakers about. We can make things look really cool and we can create anything on film. There's no shot that we can't make now. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it connects to the human experience and, and to the, the issues of our times and of the future. Well, the basis of the school is storytelling. And as I look to the future, I see that actually the moving image becomes more and more and more central not just in storytelling for entertainment, but for every other vertical. So oh, yeah. the skills that they're learning in terms of being able to connect or on social justice issues or teaching or medicine or whatever the, 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 the area is, is going to depend more and more on stories and on moving image. So their future, if they can learn that the tool is just a tool and they can understand what those tools are, and it's bright, it's very bright for them because they're the ones that are gonna have the opportunity to actually expand how we think and not just on the big screen at a movie theater, but right. in every other possible way with streaming and- Absolutely. And also that this, the cross-discipline is now not gonna be with cinematographers and directors and screenwriters and editors anymore. It's also gonna be with historians and with teachers and with doctors and- That's right. So, and technologists, so learning to collaborate beyond what already is a collaborative art form, I think is gonna be essential for the future too. And I hope that UNCSA can really be a part of that discussion. And that's you know the direction that I would love to see it go. And that's why we're already deep in conversation with quite a few partners in both technology and different schools. Right, well that, that really, uh that's really at the heart of it. Film has always been, you know, I think it was dubbed the seventh art back in 1922 or something. Uh, I forget the fellow who did it, but it's really the art of arts. You know, it's the, it's the medium of media. Uh, it uh, it host, hosts and holds within its grasp all of the creative inspirations, whether it's, you know, creative inspiration in movement or in, in visualization. So it has a big responsibility, and I think the, the School of Filmmaking at UNCSA understands that responsibility and is, uh, is going to be a fertile seedbed for a long time come.